there, everybody, wherever you may be. I'm Ken. This is Canadian Retro Things. Welcome. It is time to celebrate a major channel milestone. That's right, my channel has hit the milestone of 2 to the power of 10 subscribers. That's 400 if you're talking uh, base 16. Or 1024 if you're talking that base 10 talk. So, what am I going to do for this major milestone? Well, I am going to let you get to know me a little bit better by answering five questions. Who, what, where, when, and why. Who am I? What do I do outside of my YouTube channel? Where do I get my uh, retro stuff from? When did I realize that I was a retro nerd? And why did I start my YouTube channel? And once I've answered those questions, I'm going to take you on a little tour of the unorganized mess that is my collecting and editing area. So let's jump right in with those questions. Who am I? Well, as many of you know, if you watch my channel, I'm Ken. All right, next question. Oh, uh, I guess maybe I should go a little bit deeper than that. Okay, well, I'm quickly approaching 50, which means that I grew up in the explosion of the home computer era. My childhood was all Tandy and Apple computers. As a matter of fact, I owned and used an Apple IIGS right through the 90s into 2001. Because of this, I actually missed out on most computers and games of the 90s, which actually explains why about 90% of my collection is from the 70s and 80s. During the 90s, I also graduated from university with a degree in theater. And since then, I have been working for basically myself in companies that I've owned, which leads me into the next question. What do I do outside of my YouTube channel? As I said, I have worked for myself most of my life. The most recent job that I had was owning a coffee shop here in the lower mainland of uh, Vancouver, BC, Canada. Now, unfortunately, we closed down uh, uh, last year. And it wasn't because of a certain virus that was going around. It was actually because of a greedy landlord basically doubling our rent um, and uh, we couldn't afford it after barely surviving said virus. So I decided I wanted to do something completely different. And I took inspiration from the fact that I like making these YouTube videos so much. So now I work as a background performer in movies and television. That's right, I'm one of those people that sit in the back of a scene and pretend to eat a plate of pasta take after take. Now, I'm fairly new at this, so I haven't done a lot of work yet, but I'm really looking forward to the possibilities of the future. Where do I get my retro stuff from? Well, one of the places that I rarely buy anything is eBay because generally they are way overpriced. The only thing I tend to buy from eBay is specific parts because uh, they're easier to find on there when I'm doing a repair on something. And in the area that I live, thrift stores and secondhand stores, the pickings are generally almost non-existent. And even when they do have something, they tend to have them at almost eBay prices, so really overpriced. The place that I do actually get most of my stuff from is live auctions. Now, one of the advantages of living in a large population area like I do is that there are a number of auctions every week. Now, even at those auctions, you always get 
a few bidders, well, not always, but sometimes get a few bidders that think that they're going to get rich buying some uh, retro stuff. So you just sit back, let them overpay for stuff, and then let them sit and watch their stuff sit on eBay at extraordinary prices that are even higher than normal eBay prices because of the price they paid for them at the auction. With a little patience, those bidders go away quickly. Even at uh, auctions, I have noticed that the pickings are getting slimmer and slimmer. So, yeah, I don't know where I'm going to start going in the future if those dry up. But for now, I'm still finding a few things to be able to do videos about. When did I know that I was a retro nerd? Well, as I said before, I had an Apple II GS that I used right up until the early 2000s. So I guess even then I was retro. And I did finally get a Windows computer, which was for work, right after I stopped using my Apple II GS. And uh, the games that I got for it, as well as my PlayStation 2, which I picked up shortly after the Windows computer, were basically all old games. They were old compilation discs, usually like these that uh, I picked up to play old games on my new hardware. So I guess that means that, uh, yeah, I've really been a retro nerd all of my adult life. Why did I start my YouTube channel? Well, as I said before, uh, my last job was as the owner of a coffee shop. And I found that I was spending 12 to 15 hours a day there, seven days a week. So I needed a hobby. I had always enjoyed retro things and I enjoyed watching the other retro YouTubers. So I figured, hey, why not start myself a YouTube channel? Well, it worked. It was a great distraction. I did my filming at night. I edited the videos together during the slow times at work. And uh, yeah, it just turned out it was a really good distraction from the amount of time that I was spending at work. So I didn't have any big plans for the, the um, YouTube channel. I just wanted the uh, ability to focus on a hobby. If people watch the channel, then it was a bonus. And it is a big bonus considering how many subscribers I've reached. So thank you very much. So we'll start this little tour off with a spot that people may recognize if they've been watching the channel since the very beginning. This is a desk in the corner of my bedroom. This is actually where I originally was filming all of my YouTube videos. Now, it's mostly just a spot that I uh, set up my newer computers, like my Macintosh LC475 there, or my Tandy 1000. They are permanently set up here and ready to be played at any point. Um, the only time that I ever move them out of here is if I need to film them for a video out on the workbench. So speaking of the workbench, let's step out of the bedroom. Immediately upon stepping out of my bedroom, you'll come to the work area. This is where I do most of my soldering and tinkering and everything else. As you can see, there's a computer and TV set up there so that I can look things up on the internet while I'm working and have them right there. Then above that, I have shelves of things that I have displayed, like some PlayStation stuff, uh, my ColecoVision cartridges, my Atari cartridges, and right beside everything, I have my wall of cables. That wall of cables comes in very handy when I'm working on stuff on the table. Right on the other side of the wall of wires is the display cabinet on the edge of the screen here where I have a number of different computers and related items. Beside that is just a regular bookshelf. But then if we slide down to the TV setup there, on either side of the TV are some display cases that are just full of lots of stuff. There is some plug and play games, 
in televisions, Ataris, ColecoVisions, PlayStation 1s, um, Nintendos, a lot of discs and cartridges, and uh, even below the TV, there's even an RCA Selectivision video disc player, which I've never shown on the channel. It's in the uh, one of the little glass display things in the bottom there. It works. And on top is just a mix of some old and new stuff on display. If you're sitting at my work table and you turn around directly behind you is this sit up bench with a couple of computers on it, my Pac-Man 1UP arcade and some other various random things. I got this sit-up bench from my coffee shop. I took it with me when we closed and it's now in my basement as a place to set up a few different computers and games to play. And now we move over to the little alcove on the side of the room where a lot of stuff happens. As you can see, this is where I have my main computer set up. My uh, Coco 3 is set up here. This is where I edit everything together. This is also where I uh, write scripts, where I just relax and play games, where I uh, film a lot of stuff that uh, requires me to capture footage off things like my Coco 3. This is also where I sit to film things like the Coco Nation, my Twitch channel, as well as uh, the Coco Nation Game On Challenge live gameplay happens right here. So I spend a lot of time in this little corner of the room. Now, the next place we're gonna see is we are gonna wander on out to the garage. And now we'll end our tour out here in the dark, cramped little garage. Yeah, I guess I could have planned that a little bit better. Anyways, I've actually had to start putting things recently out in the garage here. Um, the shelves came from my uh, coffee shop. And uh, yeah, I started running out of room to put things inside, especially once I picked up, as you may see, a lot of games in here. Well, I picked up a lot from an auction that was basic all of these games. And uh, yeah, so I needed a place to put them all. So I set the shelves up out here. And now it's also become a holding place for computers and other things that I'm going to be working on in the future. Unfortunately, the garage is currently packed full of stuff from my coffee shop. So as I get rid of that over time, I'm hoping to actually um, be able to build a little work area in here, a secondary work area, so I can be working on more than one project at a time. All right, well, that is a look at the area that I have all of my retro stuff in. And that is my 1,024 subscriber special. I hope you've gotten to know me a little bit better and that you enjoyed taking a look at the unorganized mess that is my retro collection. Oh, what are these? Yeah, one of the things I forgot to mention is that I do enjoy also baking and cooking and I baked myself up some sugar-free vanilla cupcakes with a sugar-free buttercream on top of them. So I'm going to celebrate with having one of these and I guess I will share them with my family since you're not here to share them with. All right, well, as I say in all my videos, I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, don't forget that liking, subscribing and commenting are all things that really help the channel out a lot. And uh, yeah, they're all really greatly appreciated. So I... I'm going to have one of my two to the power of 10 cupcakes. Silicone uh, baking things for the cupcakes so that they're reusable. So I will see you next time.